Hey everyone, I'm Felipe Schmidt, part of the architecture team at ITSM Group. In today's video, we are going to start talking about widgets. It was the missing piece when we talked about the first two topics, portals and pages. So today we're going to focus on how the widgets work and what are the main three components on the widgets so that we can build, understand and also reuse out of the box widgets by modifying widget options in some pages. So let's get started. When we talk about widgets, we have to have in mind that the widget simply process some information that will be displayed to the end user. So basically the widgets are inside pages and those pages will contain one or multiple widgets. Those widgets, they might communicate to each other or they can be independent and simply do some processing by themselves and simply display this, this information. We are going to abstract any type of complexity to this video so that we can make it very simple. So let's get started. Basically, when we start talking about widgets, we have the widgets module in the service portal. In here, you have listed all the widgets from the, flat, the platform itself. And in here, when we talk about widgets, I have my favorite one in which I always talk about. It's the icon link that you can reuse everywhere and many times depending on the customer requirements. But this here is one of the most useful widgets. And anytime you open the widget, you have some fields like the HTML template that will be displayed. You have the CSS, which deals with the layout, the server script that sometimes does some processing and grab the data from the backend and from the database and also shows to the end user and the client controller. As the name says, it will control the information that goes and pass between the server and the HTML that will be displayed to the end user. Saying that, this way you can open a widget, but using the widget in editor, it's going to be one of the best ways that you can handle and use your widget. When using this editor here, it's much easier to see what you're doing and where you're doing this stuff. If we need to rank here, what are the most important components in the widget editor? I would say that where we most use is the HTML, the client script and the server script. Those are the ones which you are deal all the time. Of course, sometimes we need to deal with a CSS, which you can open and the link function that is also one part that you can, it's similar to the client script part, but those three here are the most useful ones. There are also some parts which are not shown here, but if we go to the backend, we have also the dependencies, Angular providers, ng templates, and those ones we can also use. Sometimes we also need them, but as said in the beginning of the video, we are going to simplify and abstract any type of complexity so that we can achieve our goal and understand. Now that we have all of the three here opened, we need to see and understand which part does what. So starting from the server script at the right side, this part will simply grab all the data from the database. This data, you can do a glide record in here. In this specific scenario from this widget out of the box, it simply gets the options of the widget and will save in some variable so that this can be reused on the HTML template. On the client script part is where all the information that needs to pass between the user and the database, the logic will contain in here. Sometimes a user needs to click on a button and this button will grab some data to be displayed. It's on the client script where we will create one function and this function will call the server. So I always mention to my colleagues, you can think about a widget that will pull the information from the right side to the left side and also the other way around. So sometimes you don't really need to pass through the client. As in this example here, you have the data.ref and this data.ref you can reuse in directly inside of the HTML template. So now that we have this widget here opened, icon link, we want to see how it looks like first of all. So we just landed in the index page and if we use the show widget customizations, we have seen all the widgets which are on the page. So the icon link 
is one of the widgets that are reused in this index page. And we can see this if we click on the eye. We have the icon link and we also can click in here in the knowledge base and we also have the icon link in here and so on. If we control and right click, we will see all the options about this widget. So basically, if you click on instance options is where you can type and you can set up some base information for this specific instance of the widget. So anytime you reuse a widget, you are creating one instance of the widget. That's why whenever you are coding a widget, you have to think a way to make it as most generic as possible. Because if you think like this, you are making it so easy to be reused everywhere and you save lines of code, you are not duplicating any code and the logic is consistent in all the widgets as we have, for example, in the icon link. In the icon link, you have the widget options. For this instance, we are setting up that this icon link has this title, this short description and this icon in here. Now let's put into practice what we have done. So for this exercise, we are simply going to create one page. And for this page, we're going to add a simple widget that will display some data, a list of records for incidents which are active. And how can we do that? We let's create first a page. We can create in this simple way here that we know. And let's say this page will be our, and let's name it all incidents. As a matter of example, doesn't need to be like this. And let's submit. And whenever we have an empty page, we can click on the plus. The plus will display all the possible layouts as we have in here. And let's put it as a 12. And now we can search for our widget that we want to add. Let's use the simple list. The simple list is also a known widget in which will, based on some options, display some data for a specific table. So you can click in this pencil here and it will open all the options of the widget. Let's set up this widget here. We want all the incidents. Let's put active true, all the incidents. We want the number and the secondary fields to be the short description to be displayed as well as priority. For the list page, you can simply leave it empty for now. And for the behavior, the link to this page is the form itself. So whenever you click on a record to which page it will be the redirected and also the view, you can set up a view which view to be displayed for this incident itself. But let's leave it as much simple as possible and let's save it. Now what we have done, we have created a page, added a widget to the page and you can simply use this preview here so that you can see the page, how it looks like, or of course you can always go to the slash SP ID equals the page ID that you have defined. So whenever you click to go there, you see the incident and the list of incidents which are there, and you can modify the instance options from here now on. And to remember, we have defined that the link to this page is the form itself. So whenever you click on the incident, then you're going to be with the page that is called form. And this page will display your incident as a form record. Now let's add some more widgets. We can add the breadcrumbs to make it more generic if we want. In this situation here, I'm simply adding in the same container. So in the same container, this will look like this. But let's say we don't want in the same container. I want to add another container at the top and this container will have a layout, which is 9.3, for example. And let's push our breadcrumbs to here. And let's make it um, our type ahead search so that we can also search for tickets, for example, available. So we can refresh and keep adding some widgets. It looks like almost the same, but we have separated into two different containers. This is mainly useful when we talk about the responsiveness of the page. If we have in different containers, they will behave differently. Let's give another example and let's simply add in a new container. Let's make it 444. And we talked all the time about the icon link. 
let's add an icon link in here and one at the top right side in which we are configuring this here to be, for example, we are going to a page, you can define different types of links that you're going to link your widget. And let's say we are going to navigate to the index page whenever we click in here. So go to landing page. And we could add a short description, but let's make it very simple and let's simply save. And whenever we refresh, of course it doesn't look good, but we wanted to show something so that whenever we click, the user would be able to click and go directly to the landing page. The other widget that we have defined, it doesn't appear here because we haven't defined anything to the widget. So we have added the widget in here, but it's missing to add something. So as a wrap up, we have seen all the three main components of the widgets itself, the server, the client, and the HTML template, as well as the widget options. So whenever we create a new page, we don't need to create widgets every time. Most of the time, if we make the widget as most generic as possible, we can reuse this widget in all the pages and simply modify in each instance the widget options. So therefore, we have all the consistency in all the pages in all the widgets.